Hello team, welcome back to the Minecraft Anytomb series, Trifunctional here, I'm having an awesome day, I hope you also are having an awesome day, and last episode we created our super smelter, uh, that is working out really well, smelting up glass, uh, super quick, you can see all of the mobs falling down in our sweeper mob farm, that has been working out quite well for us as well, and you might be asking yourself, Trifunctional, why are you pillared up so high in your world above your uh, iron golem farm? It's right down there. Uh, and now that is because we are going to tackle the next item on our list today. We're going to build our automatic food farm. Uh, we're going to use uh, Unary Bits food farm. And there's an excellent tutorial by Nathan Ryan that we're going to uh, base this off of. And I'll make sure to post a link in the description box of Nathan Ryan's uh, tutorial for Unary Bits Food Farm if anybody wants to build one of their own in their own Minecraft world. And so I'm up here. I made sure to come 70 blocks above the top of our, uh, of our Iron Golem Farm. That way we don't have a village within range of this food farm, which would mess up the AI for the villagers and it would uh, just make it less efficient. Uh, because this is based off of the AI of the villagers, they will be, uh, will be exploiting the AI to have the uh, one farming villager that's collecting the crops try to throw uh, the crops it collects to the other villager that's in the farm, and it won't be able to actually hit the, uh, or, the crops it throws won't actually reach the other villager. They'll fall into a, f a water stream, which will carry those crops down uh, to our collection area. And I've actually shown that in a previous episode, it'll go in that water stream past our villager breeder to make sure that is well supplied, and then ultimately into our storage that we have set up down there. So to start off with up here, I'm just going to uh, build the first platform out. And uh, I'm not going to go through this like a tutorial because uh, Nathan Ryan did such a great job on the tutorial that he has for this build. Uh, but I'll just go ahead and bring you back with uh, progress updates along the way. And you can see that giant hole that I've uh, carved out over there for the slime farm as well. <laughs> that is uh, quite the project coming along. Uh, our area is really looking cool that we have set up here looking down on it from the, the sky. I'm really happy with the way that this world has been shaping up so far. But yeah, without further ado, I'm going to get to building the first layer. And in uh, Nathan Ryan's uh, tutorial, he does four layers. He does a carrot, potato, a wheat, and a beetroot layer. Uh, I think I'm just going to do three layers for now anyways. I'm going to do the carrots, the potatoes, and the wheat layer. Because I can sell all of those to villagers, and I I haven't found a villager that buys beetroot yet. I haven't really found a good use for beetroot, so I think our just our small farm of beetroot is going to be plenty for us. So yeah, we're just going to cut it down to three layers for this. We'll do the, the carrots, the potatoes, and the wheat. But yes, I'm going to go ahead and get to building, and I will bring you back in a bit. You get a nice block, and you get a nice block. And you get an ice block. Everybody gets an ice block. <laughs> so, team, I've got the first layer uh, pretty well established here. I put a layer of the stone bricks down and then a layer of dirt on top of it. Uh, the dirt is obviously going to be where we are going to have the crops growing. And uh, now where I have all the ice blocks placed around, that's where we're going to have the... Uh, water for all of our uh, to hydrate all of our crops so we can go around and break all these ice blocks and create those water pools and then uh, next I'm gonna go ahead and put up a, a glass wall around the uh, outer edge just a, a too high glass wall just to keep our villagers contained within uh, or I guess just uh, the one villager contained within our farm here that's actually gonna be harvesting the crops and we'll also uh, throw some lily pads on these 
uh, water spots here just so that we're not falling in there and so that our villagers aren't falling in there as well. Now we're not going to need lily pads on those center two uh, spots for uh, because we're going to be covering those up with uh, blocks. And so yeah, uh, after I get the uh, two high walls around the outer edges, uh, we will go ahead and and I'm going to use the green stained glass for this part. But after I get that set up, we'll go ahead and get uh, the center area put together where we're going to have the uh, villager, uh, the hungry villager hanging out so that we can entice the farming villager to go over and throw food to the hungry villager. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, get a little bit more work done and I will be right back. Oh, one jack-o'-lantern. Uh, two jack-o'-lanterns. And three jack-o'-lanterns. Welcome back team. So I went ahead and got the walls put up, the lighting put up with the jack-o'-lanterns, and I've got a lot of the center area where we're going to have the hungry villager hangout set up as well. Uh, so this right here on this lily pad, that's where the hungry villager is going to be hanging out. Uh, and then down below here, this block isn't going to be here. This is where the uh, farmer villager will walk up and try to throw a or throw food to the hungry villager which will actually land in this water stream and it'll carry it over to this drop chute which will uh, land down into a, a water pathway that will set up to connect to the water pathway that we already have set up down below by our villager breeder so the next step that we're going to be doing for this first layer is getting the hungry villager up there up here and now this is really high up so i'm gonna have to first of all figure out a way to get down because i did not bring my elytra unfortunately and then i'm also going to need to uh create i'm thinking a uh, a rail system all the way up here i think that's how we're going to transport our villagers up here so next i'm going to work on getting down and Getting the railway set up, I'm thinking to get down, we'll probably just use this bucket of water. Uh, let's go ahead and throw down this guy here, and then let's grab out our bucket of water. Now, I'm really hoping that there isn't anything down there that this water is going to mess up. It might end up breaking that bed maybe and it might end up breaking those carpets too but we'll go ahead and see let's go ahead and throw it down there and here we go and so yeah I'm gonna use the water to get down and then I should be placing ladders because <laughs> I'm gonna use ladders to get back up after I get the uh, after I get the villager up here via the rails so I'm going to go ahead and uh, keep plugging away, get some rails set up, and I will bring you back. Alright, so we have a chink in the armor. I'm going to need a lot of powered rails to be able to get a villager all the way up there. And as we learned from last episode, I am about out of gold and powered rails. I have seven gold. That's enough for six powered rails. That cobble shouldn't be there. <laughs> So, I guess I'm going to have to go caving to go find some gold so that we can uh, get our villagers up there to uh, complete this build. And so, I'm going to work on that. And the other thing I'm going to do, this is our, our frame for our uh, to-do list. But I'm going to go ahead and add to our to-do list gold farm. That's something we're going to need to do in the near future as well because... Uh, we're running out of gold quite often, and we can't have that. So I'm going to go do some caving, get the gold we'll need, and then once I get the uh, the rail set up, we'll bring you back. All right, team, we are back. So as I was procrastinating on going to gather more gold from the caves and eating a turkey club for lunch, I decided that I would build a water elevator instead. So this makes it so I don't need all of the powered rails, and it should work out. Uh, it's similar to the water elevator that we made for our zombie farm, 
Uh, so once I get a villager in here, he should just swim all the way up to the top and then follow the water stream down onto our farm land that we have up there. So uh, I set up a similar uh, cart system to pull them out of the uh, little area here. And for this first villager, we would prefer not a farmer because we have a limited number of farmers in there. And this one doesn't need to be a farmer, it just needs to be a random villager that doesn't have any items in his inventory. So let's go ahead and pull one out. And of course we got a farmer that first try. So, you know what? We might actually just send this guy up anyways because we're going to need a farmer up there as well. So we could just send him up there and just trap him in a corner or something up there. So that might actually be what I do. Uh, and as I'm pulling out these villagers as well, I have a little stop before they go into the water elevator. Because I just want to make sure that I don't send any, like, librarians that have a mending book trade or anything up there. Uh, because I would rather have a librarian that has a good enchanting book trade in our trading center rather than just chilling up in our uh, automatic uh, food farm. So I'm just uh, going to head up here real quick and make sure that I have the exit blocked off so that once we get the villager up here, he doesn't just uh, run out the exit. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and just do a quick cut while I take care of this, and then I'll bring it back and we'll see if the water elevator works together. <laughs> and we're back, team. I said uh, something troubling happened. I had a zombie up here in our uh, villager tower with me, which is not supposed to happen. I think that because I put the automatic food farm up above, that it kind of darkened the areas up here. And so it might have just spawned up here somewhere. So I'm going to have to go around and make sure that I have everywhere really well lit because... Uh, zombies infecting our uh, villagers, especially the ones with the good trades, uh, that's not going to be good. <laughs> uh, but I will make sure... I'm just kind of spamming torches at this point. All of these are really unnecessary, it looks like. Um, anyways. Let's place... Yeah, there we go. So I've got my villager here. Let's go ahead and break the minecart. And there he goes. Up the... Uh, elevator there and yeah it looks like it's working out well he should make it all the way up and I think we'll actually just follow him up there let's go ahead and eat some food real quick and this is a uh, a way for us to get up there too so let's just go ahead and follow him up there and then uh, we'll go ahead and trap him up there and then I'll go ahead and grab another one uh, that we'll actually use as the uh, the hungry villager that we're trying to place at this point. Uh, so I will uh, go ahead and take care of this, and I'll bring you back in a, a little bit. And welcome back, team. So we got the next villager up here. Now over here is where I trapped the farmer that we'll use for this level. And it worked out perfectly. We got a green shirt for the uh, villager that we're going to trap in the uh, the hungry villager spot. And as I've mentioned in a previous episode, the green shirts are the nitwits that uh, don't have any trades, so they're pretty much useless. So it's uh, perfect that we're going to be able to use them for this purpose. Uh, so let's go ahead and push them up here into the right spot. And I'm hoping that I have a piece of glass on me. I might not actually. Let's go ahead and get him in there, and then I'll run and grab a piece of glass quick. Or actually, I'll just use that for now. Yeah. So yeah, so that's where he's going to hang out. And so, again, uh, he's going to be the one who is uh, standing there hungry, and then the farmer will throw food to him, but actually miss. It'll throw it into the water stream, and then take it down to uh, where we want it for the, the villager breeder down below. So, yeah. Uh, this is uh, coming along quite nicely, and this is quite a big project. This is actually taking a, a lot longer than I thought it was going to. 
So I'm thinking that we're probably just going to get the one layer done for today and make sure that we have that layer up and running. I think we'll start with uh, carrots on this bottom layer. We'll get that up and running and make sure that's all working well with the water streams, bringing the, uh, the carrots down to our villager breeder down below. And then I can uh, work on the other two layers off camera as well. Uh, but I'm going to continue plugging away. All right, team. So we've got all of the land tilled. I've planted a few carrots. I threw him a stack of carrots as well. So the farmer is busy uh, planting the carrots that he, he has on him. Now, this is so much farm area that it's going to take a while before he harvests enough to get everything planted and the uh, farm gets to fully functioning. I just threw a little bit of a, a cobblestone cap over this guy. Uh, to protect him, also to get the light levels right so that this bottom layer is working uh, while I am setting up the uh, top two layers and while I am setting up the uh, item system down below as well, the uh, item streams. So that is what I will be working on next is getting the item streams all set up uh, so that they are connected up with our uh, villager breeder down below. But yes, I've been working on this for quite a while, so that is all the time that I have for recording this episode for today. And so I'll make sure to continue working on this uh, between episodes, and I'll show you what I have set up as far as the uh, the water streams for the items and, and everything once we get the other two layers set up as well. I'll make sure to showcase that in future episodes. Uh, but I do want to thank you for uh, joining me, for watching today. I've had a blast of getting this set up. I hope you enjoyed it as well. And if you did, make sure to hit that like button by hitting that uh, that thumbs up. Definitely helps me out a lot. Also, if you're new and you haven't already, make sure to subscribe by hitting the uh, subscribe button below as well. Uh, if you have any uh, comments or any suggestions or questions, uh, make sure to leave those in the comment section below. I appreciate that feedback. But hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I will catch you on the flip side.